you know, everything is dependent on advertising we get that goes on those stations and donations. So please check that out. We'll be back in two and a half minutes. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. Do you have a paranormal story you want to share on Night Dreams Talk Radio? You could be a guest. Email us at nightdreamstalkradio at gmail.com. If you would like to hear Night Dreams Talk Radio on your local radio station, let them know. Tell them to check out www.nightdreamstalkradio.com. And thank you. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark with our host, Gary Anderson. And that is me. We also have James out there. But you know what? A woman was killed in Texas when she was attacked by wild hogs. I guess from what I'm reading, it's really in like Texas and a few other states. They've got a problem with hogs. Yeah, that was a story I reported on yesterday. And um, it's not just Texas. It's uh, Louisiana, Arkansas, uh, Alabama, Mississippi, all down through there. Um, and these hogs, they multiply like rabbits, Gary. And they're a nuisance to farmers. I mean, they will destroy the whole field of crops uh, overnight. They'll just destroy it. And they will kill other animals, too. They're, they are a nuisance. Oh, yeah. And, you know, so if you're out there hunting and all that stuff, or if you're out there even looking for Bigfoot or whatever, I mean, these animals are aggressive. You know what? I Now I don't feel bad about eating ham. But, again, after what you said about worms and stuff like that, I don't even think I want to eat ham. But can you imagine, you know, they eat everything and anything. As if You know, you want to get rid of vegetable matter, throw it in with the hog pen. You want to get rid of a body? Throw it in with a hog pen. They'll even eat the bones. They're not. They're not picky on what they eat. 
I've only and and and, and you know me, I'm curious and do a little experiments, and I've known many a hog farmer, and I've only found in my whole lifetime of trying everything, there, I've found two things they will not eat. One is cucumbers, and the other is oranges. I don't know why they won't eat those two things, but they will eat people, and they'll eat other animals, and they'll eat anything else you put in there. But they won't. Eat. You can you can try to hide a cucumber and an orange in a pile of whatever, and they'll eat everything but those two things. <laughs> yeah, and some people even have them as a pet. And you know what? I mean, how would you like to have a pig as a pet, and then you know, like laying on your bed with you watching TV? In the middle of the night, it decides, you know what? You look really tasty and bites off your foot. Who knows? I, I don't know. Yeah, I know. And, and you know, even uh, domesticated or even livestock pigs, once they're set free, if they're out free, they turn feral real quick. They, they'll turn feral in their, their – it's like their genes turn – they change or something because they'll start growing long tusk and and, um, and those tusks can get sharp and they they can really mess you up with those things. You know, I had a friend that had a pig. He, and it was supposed to have been a miniature pig, and then he realized something like six months later, this miniature pig was getting bigger and bigger. And a couple of years later, I go over to his house because he used to work on motorcycles. And I I decided, hey, I needed some work on a motorcycle. I had I I rode over there, you know and and in his driveway, that was a pig. It weighed hundreds of pounds. It was huge and moved so slow. And it, like, it just didn't want to get out of my way. And then all of a sudden, I was his best buddy. It followed me around everywhere. Maybe he got that miniature pig where he got your miniature goat. Yeah, the one we still have. Yeah, the late. Oh, yes. This, <laughs> the, the, yeah, this is a miniature goat. It won't get any taller than this. And it was fixed also. Yeah. Uh-huh. They saw us coming from wherever. The goat was a full-size goat. There was no miniature goat. And it, no, it was never fixed. No, they told you what they had to tell you, what you wanted to hear just to get that evil thing gone. Yeah, evil is not the magic. You know, I, I swear to God, this thing was evil. It did not <laughs> it like me at all. It just stared at me. At You know, like... it. It, you know, who would who'd want to even feed a goat if it decides every time you go anywhere near it, it's got two things that, in its mind. One is either knocking you over or putting its head down and, you know, it still has its horns. And uh, yeah. want to, you know, buck you. I No, thank you. Yeah, they're pretty stout and strong. I, you know, it reminds me a uh, long time ago, way back 30 plus years ago, and me and my um, sister was living together for a little bit. And the neighbor had this daggone rooster, and I'd be out working on my car, and it, and that rooster would come over, and you know if you're not looking at this rooster, he would spur me all the way up from my ankles all the way up to halfway up my back, and I was like, what the? <laughs> I turn around, and every time I'd go to work on this car, he kept doing that. Well, this daggone rooster kept doing this and doing this, and I told the neighbor, look, man, <laughs> this rooster's getting out of hand. He goes, well, nothing I can do about it. I'm like, well, he's coming over to our place. Anyway, long story short, one day me, me and my sister was eating chicken. She said, have you seen that rooster lately? I said, no, I don't know what happened to that poor guy. <laughs> but uh, now, how, did it, it, how did it taste, James? <laughs> very tough. <laughs> very tough. But I got to tell you, goats and roosters, you don't turn your backs on them. You don't do it. That's the thats the moral of this story. Do not turn your back on a rooster or a goat. You, they will get you. I don't know if it's in their genes. They just, they're just they just destined to uh, charge you or spur you, but they will do it. Yeah, I, I noticed if I eyed the goat, you know, it would never attack. It's like when I got done eyeing it, like, how do I get out of here? You know, it, it, or if I would take my eyes off of it, then it was like charge. Oh yeah, worst thing you could do is turn your take your eyes off them or turn your back on them, and believe me, they will get you. And they they got hard heads, them goats. Let me tell you. And I've had one lift me off the ground. I'm a couple hundred pounds, and it was wasn't nothing for it to do that. And uh, I wasn't very happy about it either. I will tell you. Yeah, I don't know. Now the thing is, we had two goats before that, which passed on. They were, you know, of course, this is a male goat, and the other were female goats. 
But, you know, we had them when, since they were a baby. And I, I tell you what, I mean, they were very attached to us and, and they acted like a dog. Maybe that's because we had a dog, a couple of them. And, you know, they kind of, you know, I mean, they would follow us around like you wouldn't believe. And, and they were lovable and they didn't have any meanness in them at all. And then you get this male goat with the horns. I think of the devil when I look at this. <laughs> yeah, you ever see the pictures of the devil? It's a goat head. That's probably your goat. It's it's um, living vicariously through your goat. So yeah, you don't you don't want to make him mad or turn your back on him. Yeah, I know, <laughs> and I'm still paying for it, and I probably will be paying for it till the summer. When, you know, my goal is to be back walking normal by the summer. Oh, well, that's good. I'm, you know what? I'm sure you will be. I know it's been a long road, but you've had, you just was unfortunate had a few falls when you were injured and kept re-injuring yourself. But it all started with that dang on goat. Yeah, it, the, the yeah that started the whole thing. I had all those falls within a, like a three day period. The last fall was the one that got me, and, and I'm paying for it. You know, like I was telling my wife the other day, I said, "What do you want me to do?" I mean, you know, I I'm in prison. The only time I've been out of this house is going to pack, you know, the paramedics taking me back to the hospital. It's been since June 16th. I've been confined, you know, in my house. And I tell you what, I miss going to Taco Bell. I certainly don't miss going to that other place with the arches. But I, I, I miss doing things, you know, with my daughter, picking her up from work and, you know, going out and getting teriyaki or something. No pork, though. Uh, and you know, it's, it's not fun. I mean, I know, you know but my show's improved, I guess, because now I have nothing else to do, either watch TV or, you know, work on the show. Right. Well, you've had a lot of time to focus your energy on your show and that's a positive thing. It's just unfortunate. It, it came to, to not having many other choices to do, but at least you did focus on that and you've got your show to a very good in the right, good direction. And um, yeah, that sucks. We're up to sixteen. You know, just, li- we're up to sixteen listeners. Well, that's better than when you started when you had five. So <laughs> that's an improvement. Next week we might have seventeen. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course. Mm. Also, you want to buy the Brooklyn Bridge? I mean, you know, yeah. We have more than fifteen or sixteen <laughs> listeners. Trust me. I just throw that as a little joke. I, but I I do that as a reason because I remember two years ago I had about that many. <laughs> and now I have as many you can fill a good sized city. So I mean hey, that's a big improvement I guess. I bet. And I bet you have a bunch of listeners tonight and Friday and especially uh, Monday. Oh yeah. I'll tell you what. If I was 25 years younger and not married and didn't have eight kids, Karen Banks would be perfect for me. You know why? 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 Because she is a, a, a hound of going and finding, you know, relics and stuff like that. I used to do this, what she did. I used to go up to a, abandoned towns, you know, that like from the 1890s where they all moved away. And, you know, you go digging in the ground and you find these old medicine bottles. You'd find all these relics and, and cool things. I even fought, I found a part of a Colt revolver one time. I mean, I really got off on doing things like that. So, you know, I got married. My wife just likes going to uh, thrift stores and going to the Walmart store and coming home with stuff. Yeah, you know, years and years ago, I had a metal detector. And, um, boy, I found all kind of good stuff. Gold earrings, uh, silver dimes, you know, buried in the, you know, in the ground. People would lose them and stuff. And then... Uh, I did come across a treasure trove. It must have been somebody dumped old bottles from the 1800s right up into the 1920s. Some really good stuff. I got decent money for them. And, and the bottles, it wasn't the bottles that set off the the uh, detector. It would, it would be their lids or stuff around them. And it just kept digging. It was a whole treasure trove. It looked like a trash pile, you know, from 100 years ago. But, you know, some stuff 100 years ago was trash is now treasure. Oh, yeah. There is a guy a couple, maybe a month or two ago, actually. Uh, well, a bunch of them, they were in the black forest in Germany and they're looking for world war two relics. They do some digging and they find this, what's left of a metal box. And then inside the metal box is a wood box and they pop it open and they find brand new Lugers. Oh, wow. And they were all covered, you know, with packed in grease and all that stuff. 
and they showed them and they were almost like new i mean you know there was no rust on them and no nothing i tell you what that, that would be a